Now, from humble beginnings, Lee Diffie's dulcet tones have put him on the world stage. Lee was born and raised in Housing Commission outside Brisbane. He's now a sports broadcaster for American giant NBC. And Lee is about to call the race of his life. In the white top, fastest man in the world in 2021. There'd be people who are like, why is there an Aussie calling for, for the United States audience? A really good start from Bromel. Ronnie Baker's going with him. There's the talk and expectation, you know, there's stats and there's all these different things, but it comes down to the moment. Here we go, Trayvon Bromel wins the men's 100. Has it sunk in yet? Yeah, it hasn't sunk in yet. It will when I get to Tokyo. Day three here in Eugene, Oregon at Hayward Field for another exciting day of competition. Lee Diffie has landed one of the plum gigs in world sport. He'll be calling the most watched 10 seconds of the Tokyo Olympics for American broadcaster NBC as the fastest man and woman in the world are crowned. She did it in spectacular style. It's an important race, but it's only 10 seconds. How on earth do you prepare for that? And there's nothing like being in the moment and doing preparatory meets. So like here we are here at the, at the US Olympic trials, and spotting who gets out of the blocks first and who's moving better and who has that first 30 meters down or who is coming on strong in the middle part of the race. JVN Oliver, a fantastic start. She's putting the pressure on Richardson. There's a lot that goes on in less than 10 seconds and, and you hope that you just pinpoint it right. Richardson's going to Tokyo. For Diffie, it's a great coup. But this is not a story of overnight success. He spent decades honing his craft, getting his reps up, as he calls it. Mom is Karen. It's actually spelled K-A-R-O-N. He's covered, well, everything. Rowing, bobsled, skeleton, luge. I've been on so many different properties um, under, the, um, under the NBC umbrella. But it's with his beloved motorsports where he really made his mark. Formula One, NASCAR and the prolific Indy 500 home stretch, less than half a mile, Simon Pagano sweeps him up the May and wins his maiden Indy 500. I quite often meet people who have no idea who I am by my face, but as soon as I start speaking, they're like, oh, you're that guy from, you know, so, uh, yeah, th there is that kind of a recognition. It's a long way from home, Ipswich, Queensland, where the boy from Carroll Park's Housing Commission found his calling, swapping his motorbike for a spot behind the crackly PA. It was at a place called Tivoli Raceway outside of Ipswich. I got paid $60 and I think I called 94 races in a <laughs> single day. And uh, it was hot, hard work, but it was great learning. 55 minutes remaining. But you'd be often in a wooden tower, one microphone and a, and, a, and a radio to give you a break in between races. Diffie juggled gym instructing, then teaching, but always had a commentary gig on the side. His big break came when he got a call up for the Australian Super Touring Championship. Lowndes has done it on the day he farewelled his friend. Then came the V8s and Sports Tonight. A brief stint in London with the BBC before he landed in Connecticut, where he now calls home. Look, he's calling the biggest auto races, uh, motorsports here in America. Lee's longtime friend and NBC sideline commentator, Lewis Johnson. His passion for being able to dig in and find those stories, doing all the homework, and then being able to bring that information uh, in such a relaxed and fun way, uh, that is one of his many gifts. In the booth, Diffie will be joined by a man who knows what it's like to be on the other side, four-time Olympic sprint medalist Atto Bolden. Lee is going to do sort of the big picture stuff. I am the analyst, so it's my job to analyze. Atto is from Trinidad and Tobago, and their co-commentator, Olympic 400 meter champion, Sonia Richards-Ross, is from Jamaica. I'm new to the booth, and he is someone who is just so welcoming, so warm. The irony of a Commonwealth crew manning the coverage for 30 million plus Americans is not lost on them. Every now and then we get the idiot on social media who says, you know, uh, I'm hearing an Aussie voice, why can't we get an American? It's innocent. I think that NBC can hire anybody they want for these jobs. I know that they chose Lee because Lee is the best person to do this job. It's a pretty good dress rehearsal. I mean. Diffie is using these US Olympic trials in Eugene, Oregon to meticulously study every American athlete who qualifies. Well, the events have their own characteristics, right? Yeah. So, so you know, 100, it's boom, 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 it's done. As he prepares for the biggest race call of his life.
is there a common thread between them? Yeah, I mean, you know, I, I don't want to be disparaging to, to any other sports, but a race is a race is a race. Whether it be calling, you know, a sub 10 second 100 meters or, or calling a Formula One Grand Prix, it could be a 40 second luge race. The duration might be different, but the dynamics of a race are the same. So you just have to be flexible to, you know, to adapt to whatever those parameters are. One of these drivers will do something we will never, ever forget. I've worked with a lot of people all over the world in television and they talk about hard days at work and I'm like, you don't know what hard days are. Sitting out <laughs> in the Queensland sun or in Western New South Wales and calling motocross, they were good old days and I, uh, they were part of the framework for you know, helping me get here. They were the runs on the board that you needed to get to where you are now. Runs on the board, you've got to do the reps. After the break, on the road to recovery, how Tiff Hall defied the odds.